Hello, uh, my name is Seikos Philippa. Uh, I work as a software developer within uh, Kindle the Books, uh, so the Kindle organization, Amazon. Um, a website called Kindle Direct Publishing, uh, essentially for independent authors to publish their work with, with Amazon. So someone like myself, who's not necessarily an author by trade, doesn't want to go through a publisher, can go and upload their book there and then publish with us. Uh, uh, and I'm here to help you uh, with the uh, interview section, specifically the coding part. Uh, hopefully, provide you with some some tips as to things we look for, uh, things to avoid. Um, and I'll be doing that just through the uh, an example coding exercise. So I'll be essentially pasting in some code, walking through um, kind of the, some of the things we look for when uh, when writing the code and before and, and after, um, and things to to avoid. Um, We'll start with the, the tool you'll be using for your interview. It's called Life Code. I have that shared on my screen. Uh, essentially, it's just a text editor. Um, you don't have the ability to compile or run code, uh, but you could choose just a language for, for highlighting, for syntax highlighting. We'll go with Java. Um, and your interviewer will just uh, paste a question for you. So we'll start pasting the question. And um, you'll be given some time, uh, about 25 minutes or so is typical time. Uh, so I recommend the first thing you do is, uh, is obviously read through the question, but but take take your time to read through the questions. Take at least two to three minutes. Um, in this case, uh, I'll just read, read through it real quick. Um, it looks like we'll be provided a time series. It's a two-dimensional array. It can have uh, ones and zeros, and those represent robot positions. One is where uh, a robot exists. Zero, it doesn't. And we're asked to essentially return true or false for uh, whether a time series is valid or not. Um, this condition we see here is robots can only travel up to one index further than their previous, uh, than their position one step before. Um, and so in this first example, this first robot moved one to the left, uh, the second robot moved one to the right, so it is valid. The second example, the first robot essentially stayed in the same position, um, whereas the second robot moved two positions to the left, so it's not valid need to return false. Um, so at a high level, it seems like a fairly fairly simple solution. Uh, the first thing I recommend doing here is just kind of understanding, asking clarifying questions to help understand the problem. And uh, there are a couple of, of things you can ask clarifying questions about. The first one is just a data input, data format, kind of um, what what the uh, constraints are for for the data uh, fields that we're getting. Um, and so one one would be, for example, like a, okay, are the array lengths the same? Um, and they are in this case. Um, two is, is the number of robots going to be uh, like negative or zero? And we'll go with, it could be zero or positive integer for here. Uh, three is, is there a minimum length for these um, for these arrays provided? And it's going to be uh, one. Uh, and same question for about kind of, kind of are the, the arrays guaranteed to have the same length or the, or the time series guaranteed to have the same length? And the answer to that is yes. And so that'll get us to essentially an, underst an understanding as to what the data coming in is. Uh, but there's also a second aspect of clarifying questions just around kind of some of the use cases for the problem. Um, and uh, kind of if we, if we don't ask any additional questions, uh, we might end up with a solution uh, or it might seem like a really simple problem uh, in which all we need to do is just walk through an array um, and then for the assigned check positions on the next array if it's uh, to see if they're one or, or not. And so it might add up with a solution like this in which, again, just walk through. When we find a one, we just check the row before or the row after. Uh, in this case, before, we check three positions, negative one, um, the same position above it, and, and plus one. You find one anywhere, we return false. Um, and this is, uh, this won't work. It has a bunch of issues, uh, but the first one is just out of bounds, uh, starting from row zero, negative one here. Uh, for both rows and columns, columns also starting at zero, but this will throw out of bounds, this will out of bounds. Um, we're not checking number of bots in, in any way, even though it's, it's provided. Um, and we also, uh, we didn't consider cases such as um, something like this in which, um, so these two robots have valid positions now, um, but this robot doesn't. Um, and so robots, we haven't asked clarifying questions around some of the, the use cases for the problem. So one would be, can robots essentially collide or can you occupy the same slot? The answer is no. Um, and two kind of, 
uh, we can ask question around the number of robots specified. Okay, will we be past the parameter as number of robots? And, and what is that used for? Uh, or is there a guarantee as to how many ones there are in every row? The answer to that is no. We will be provided number of robots, but we need to essentially check that we have the same number of robots in every row ourselves because we just passed in like a bunch of random zeros and ones in this case. Um, and so, uh, again, asking clarifying questions, one of the main things we look for in this case should have clarified some of the, the use cases here. Um, but now we have, and now we have a better understanding. So we have a, a decision to make essentially. Do we want to um, write an optimal solution to start or do we want to instead write a solution that works and then optimize it later? And we, we advise using the, the second method more often than the first because it's better to have a working solution because uh, then we have that data point uh, and then correct that later. Um, and so in this case, we'll, I'll just paste in a working solution and can walk through it. Uh, it's, it's, it's fairly simple, even though it's a lot of code. Um, so we need to recognize that we need to do two things. We need to, one, count the number of robots again, and we need to, to um, check that they're valid, but also that they don't occupy the same slots that they, that they, did, they did. They don't um, essentially um, collide in, in any way. Um, and so for this solution, as you'll notice, it's broken down into the same initial checks counting the number of robots uh, per row, checking against the number of robots. Uh, if, if we don't match, just return false. Uh, the second step is the um, uh, kind of the bulk of the problem, which is, uh, okay, now, we, and we might choose to do this a bunch of different ways. We can choose to uh, modify the grid in place or, um, you know, check uh, a row against the one after it and then check the other way around as well. Um, or the, the way we're doing right now is we just, we map the indices of the robots and then we just compare them against each other. And so we create those um, arrays that are just resp responsible for storing the positions of the robots. And um, we essentially get this for the first row because we want to start from row one compared to the row before. Um, but for every row, we get the, the indices um, and we check if it's valid against the indices of a previous row. If it's not, we return false. Otherwise, we just update to check against uh, essentially the next row. So we update the current one to check against. The next one is just checked on the next iteration of the loop. Uh, if false, okay, we just return true after. I mean, you'll notice some of the syntax is, isn't perfect, and we don't expect perfect syntax because you don't have the ability to um, uh, to compile or, or run code. And so it's more about kind of the, uh, the logical approach you take to solve the problem, um, although it, uh, we do recommend having your code be as readable as possible. Um, not just not not in terms of syntax, but just in terms of kind of having distinct functions being responsible for doing uh, different things, um, not having a lot of repetitive code. Um, kind of making sure to add comments if there's some uh, some code that's complex that someone may may not be able to read uh, very easily. Um, so we we do watch for that data point specifically, just not so much the syntax aspect of it. Um, so we have two helper functions here, just one that creates this indices uh, for us, just finds ones in a, in a row essentially and just updates this array and returns it at the end. The other one is just checks um, two array positions essentially, two, two indices uh, uh, into respective arrays for where the positions are. Um, and you'll notice I'm using a helper function here um, just because we're comparing three values, uh, you know, negative one, zero, and one are, are fine in this case. Um, and that's typically okay to do is to use library functions as long as you just mention it to your interviewer. Um, there are certain cases in which library function just, you know, solves a problem for you, which is you know, clearly not the data point we're looking for. So in that case, they'll maybe be ask you to implement that, the helper function. But as in general, it's fine to use uh, library functions, just mention that to your, to your interviewer. So, um, here we ended up with a solution that is, um, uh, it, it's working, um, but typically we recommend if you have the time to take some time to look at the code and test it on your own um, and test it. Not by, you can't run tests, obviously, but uh, writing a test case that might might break it and walking through the the code line by line is typically helpful to find bugs because otherwise, um, you know, you won't be able to to detect those bugs that might be uh, fairly fairly obvious. A lot of times, it's typos or things like that. Um, so recommend if you have the time again. Take, uh, take a little bit of time, write a case that's not a happy case uh, to test your code, uh, try, try to break it. Um, you'll also be asked about time and space complexity. In this case, uh, time complexity, you'll notice, is n squared, but it's 2n squared because we're looking about two arrays twice, uh, n squared or n times them, uh, but both are fine in this case, length, time, width. Um, 
but the space complexity is also um, OVEN because we're using these uh, arrays here. And um, it could be that number of indices is just the length of the, uh, the grid. So um, you'll also be asked what the optimal uh, time space complexity are. In this case, it's um, we can improve on both uh, time and space complexity. Uh, in time complexity, n squared, there's like we still need n squared. It's just we don't need to have two set like two separate checks. So so small o can be improved. Um, but in space complexity, we can actually run this in in constant uh, time. And so kind of making sure you have enough time saved at the end if you choose to write a non-optimal solution is usually a good idea because you'll get time, you'll get the chance to improve on that on that solution. Um, so in this case, we will um, skip forward to the optimal version of the solution just to to help walk through that real quick. Um, and you'll notice for this, it's kind of very similar um, in some in certain aspects. And so we're still counting robots, except we're doing this as part of walking through the grid one time um, uh, right, right here. But the, the main aspect of it is, is kind of moving or not using this index, this array for positions anymore, because, um, we recognize that if you just move left to right, um, a robot is forced to move into the, uh, the earliest available position essentially. And so keeping track of where the latest one is that we've used so far and kind of, uh, preventing a robot from moving to that index, but having it move, um, after it basically is is uh, guaranteed to to give us an answer. We don't need to store an, an O of n array. Um, so in this case, uh, you'll notice the last used index gets updated to where the position that we find the latest robot. Uh, if we either don't find robots, so there there are zeros in the available slots, or there are ones but they're used, um, then we just return false. Uh, otherwise, we walk through the end, we count the number of robots, we return true. And in this case, you know, time complexity is, is n squared still, but we don't have to do, you know, separate for loops for counting robots versus solving the problem. Um, but space complexity is constant because we, we don't declare any arrays or anything like that here. Um, so at a high level kind of, I know this is a quick walkthrough, this is how we'd solve a problem, but specifically what you can expect from a coding interview is you'll ask, you'll be asked a problem that's kind of similar, but it, it could use, um, kind of some of the standard algorithms, things like, you know, tree traversal, uh, greedy algorithms like dynamic programming, uh, sorting. Um, and so it's likely to have those kind of aspects in the problem. Uh, it's likely that you'll have to use some data structures as well. Some of the standard ones like, um, you know, trees, heaps, uh, sets, lists, uh, maps, arrays. Um, so, so recommend kind of having more of a, like a breadth of, of understanding of data structures more so than being a super in depth, um, on, on one of them. Um, and, and, uh, the, the biggest part I think is, is to kind of maybe uh, time yourself taking some of those exercises so that, cause you have, you're going to have like 25 minutes for the coding question. Um, and you'll want to probably start with a non-optimal solution and optimize later. Um, and so just timing yourself, we find helps a lot because it tend, time tends to go by quickly when you're, when you're writing code. Um, overall, as long as you, uh, one, just keep track of the time, uh, take time to read the, the question, ask the right clarifying questions around not just data input, but also, uh, use cases. Um, as you code, kind of pay attention to the readability of the code, not necessarily syntax, but just, you know, how easy it is to follow along and uh, not have a lot of duplicate code. Uh, use the appropriate data structures. Um, test your code if, if possible, just by walking through to, to kind of confirm some assumptions that, that you make. And uh, yeah, make sure you understand the, the time and space complexity of your of your solution. And they are able to reason through trade-offs in both time and space, as well as the, the optimal solution. Um, I hope that that helps. Um, we're, uh, we hope you're with us and we, we hope to see you working in Amazon soon. Thank you. Mm -hmm.